Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. It is Pentecost Sunday and if you haven't noticed, the theme of the day is red. Today is the day of the Holy Spirit and we wear the color of red in, in the church on Holy Spirit Sundays to be reminded of the way that the Spirit works. Uh, one of the symbols that we use for the Holy Spirit is the fi is fire. And so the refiner's fire, Paul talks about the Holy Spirit continuing to sanctify us, continuing to cause us to grow and to uh, develop as people who follow Jesus's ways and, and paths of the gospel that we continue to lean into and get better and, and more, uh, more, more, more sanctified is actually the word. And that's, that's not to be sanctimonious. That's not to be confused with being uh, better than thou. Instead, it's that continued work of confession and forgiveness of reconciling uh, reconciliation to ourselves and our neighbors, and then being partners with the world in the work of reconciliation, uh, naming sins that need to be forgiven and then helping forgiveness happen. Uh, as, as we have been given the gift of the gospel from Jesus, we now are the body of Christ in the world. And so on this day, we celebrate, we wear red, we're reminded this is the birthday of the church. So happy birthday to all of you as we continue forward in our mission of being uh, people of the gospel and at our Savior's Lutheran Church of connecting each other to God and each other uh, through word and sacrament uh, worship, through music, through uh, authentic community, through service, and through faith formation as we uh, share our service together this morning. Please like and share this service. Uh, send the link to some of your um, neighbors and friends uh, and family. Hopefully this is a service of restoration and renewal as we begin this Pentecost season together. Welcome to worship everybody. We begin our worship this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. 
We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions as our journey, in the, as, as we share this journey together uh, in your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Now let's sing together our opening song. Good morning, our saviors. This is Spirit of Gentleness on page 396. Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, amen. Today is Pentecost, it's the birthday of the church, and there's lots of prayers and words about the Holy Spirit bringing unity to the church and to uh, be an example for the sake of the world. And so today, I just uh, ask that you would join me in a word of prayer as we pray uh, for a blessing in that work. The Lord be with you. Lord, thank you for this day and for the chance to be together in our worship, in our hearts today, in the word today in our faith today. May the spirit of your, may the fire of your spirit ignite in us. May we be intolerant of the brokenness of this world, but not with a judging eye, instead with an eye or a heart that breaks for the sake of the world. Help us to reach out and reconcile differences where we can. Help us to bring those difficulties and that work back to the body of Christ, back to the congregation, and help us as a congregation be revitalized that we might support each other in the work that each one of us is called to do in our own corners of this life. Also bless the work that we do together. Lord, as we look forward to the summer and getting together again in different ways, we ask that you would bless us all with mindfulness, with a, recogn with a recognition that there are many in our midst who do not have a vaccine and that we have to be smart and thoughtful about what we do. Help us to uh, enjoy and to connect where we can and to, to fill us up with your spirit, with your word. 
Continue to guide us and keep us that we might be the, the, the place in town where reconciliation is taught and practiced and lived. Bless us in this work. Thank you for the gift of the church. Thank you for your spirit that continues to not only reconcile our lives, but also to call us to be made new, sanctifying us and working us and changing us. So bless us in this season of change as well in a new day, in a new time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy birthday, everybody. Good morning. Today's first reading comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of the Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as if of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other language, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devoted Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and in this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in a native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And now is it that is that and now is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of the Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own language, and we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are all filled with the new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what has spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will all prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Upon even my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show portions of the heaven above and signs of the earth below, blood and fire, smoky mist, and the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey everyone. The psalm reading from today comes from Psalm 104. And there was a term in this reading that I wanted to share with you that I wasn't familiar with. It's Leviathan. And when used in a biblical sense, this is a like a sea monster, sea creature, sometimes identified as a whale or a crocodile. So keep that in mind as we read through Psalm 104, verses 24 to 35. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea great and wide with its swarms too many to number living things both great and small. There go the ships to and fro and Leviathan which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them food in due season. You give to them, they gather it, you open your hand and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O oh Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. This week's second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. 
and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but we are but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel lesson is from John chapter 15, beginning in verse 26, and then it kind of bounces around to talk about the paraclete or the advocate uh, that Jesus promises will come, which we call the Holy Spirit. In this, in this word today, um, and looking back at the last year of, of work that we've done in the church, uh, sanctification that have, we've learned about in the church, um, I want to share with you how I am intending to read this gospel today, because the word father, God as father, is very much in John's language, and it's, it's almost impossible to escape. Um, and when we talk about patriarchy and we talk about developing systems that are outside of our current structure, sometimes we have to stop the traffic and just say that we have to be careful that we're, we're treading through some of this language. So for, I'm going to take liberty today as your pastor, I'm going to go ahead and, and replace the word with father with parent. And I'm not going to do this because I don't believe the scripture is right. I think that it was written very much in that way uh, of, of God as father and son and Holy Spirit. But as we continue to look forward into implementing the spirit and the gospel in our day, we have to, I think we have to generate some, some new words to convey what we're trying to say. Last thing I'll say about this, as, you, as we go through these John texts, there is a lot of um, established theology that is sort of written into the way John is written. Um, probably written after most of the other gospels, John definitely has uh, things to say about what we're supposed to believe. But the thing I'd really like us to keep our heads and hearts around today with this text is notice the paths that Jesus is laying out. Maybe we can move past some of the patriarchy and move past some of the theology into the sense that Jesus is talking about having a, about us having a, a, an exact same level of relationship and connection to God, the parent, as Jesus has to God, the parent and to what we're supposed to do with it. J Jesus said, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the parent, the spirit of truth who comes from the parent, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But, but now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send the advocate to you. And when the advocate comes, the advocate will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the parent and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, the spirit of truth will guide you into all the truth. For the spirit of truth will not speak on the spirit of truth's own accord, but will speak whatever the spirit of truth hears. And the spirit of truth will declare to you the things that are to come. The spirit of truth will glorify me because the spirit of truth will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the father all that the parent has is mine. 
For this reason, I said that the parent will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you and blessings and thank you for your grace in my interpretation and reading of that gospel text. As we lean into this uh, Pentecost Sunday today, this birthday of the church, first of all, I want to say that the artwork that's behind me today uh, was done by my daughter, Grace, and she was going through doing some different uh, texture art. This is a wax uh, thing that she did, and I took a photo of it and made it my background because it's the closest thing to fire and um, the craziness of the spirit and the freedom of the spirit that I, that I could come up with. And I, I really... Uh, thank her, Grace Leto, for that, uh, for her work. She's a great artist. And also um, for all of you, for the ways that you express the spirit in your life and the ways that we serve together uh, with this fire, with this uh, advocate, the paraclete, the friend that is God in our hearts and in our lives. As we share our ministry together, these gospel texts today, both the, the text from John, but also from Acts, where we get an example of this, of this move by God over the people. And, and if, you, if you pull back just a little bit into both Luke and Acts, which are kind of two pieces of one work, Luke, was, Luke wrote both. And when you, get, when you look at the Gospel of Luke, you look at the story and significance of Jesus Christ. And then when you get to the, the book of Acts, you look at the story and significance of the church, both of which our advent are, are, are made, are brought from God, the creator, into our experience, both the story of Jesus and his significance, and then the story of the church. They're, they're wedded together through the death and resurrection of Jesus, which is why we've just spent the last uh, probably 10 or 12 weeks, maybe 13 weeks actually, going through all of Lent and Easter and Holy Week to remember what Jesus did for us so that we have our example but, but that's, the, that's, that's only one part of it, right? That other part of it is how do we live in this world as people of faith? And as pandemic has come through and we've learned more and more about um, some of the cracks and crevices in our society, some of, the, some of the brokenness that not only did we maybe not know so much about, but we may not have known how we were complicit in it. And we've learned that that's a thing and we've, we've not to say that we didn't know this before, but to say that there's been a new awakening and awareness. And I'm going to testify today and say that that's the work of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. As Jesus talks about, and every time, every time John uses one of those pronouns, as I, as I went through that reading today, hearing the words, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, really might give us the best name that we have for our relationship with God in 2021. Because it's the spirit of truth that not only supports us when we're down and lifts us up and says, you are loved and you are known and you are okay with God and be open. That's awesome. But then you get the Holy Spirit that pushes you into the places that we have to go. We are the body of Christ, after all. We are the ones left here to do the work. And so as we go into the darker corners of the world, all those places where, where um, human nature are in full force and broken systems and evil abound, we are called to be agents of grace, agents of surprising forgiveness, but also agents of and and servants of the law both we have we're, we're a church that's built in so many different paradi uh, paradoxes right we're both the law and the gospel we we hear the word and it is a life-giving word of, of 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 living the right way of 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 not hurting our neighbor as an ethic and as a life skill and as a faith walk and then when we do hurt our neighbors, or we do hurt ourselves, or we do break the law, or we do make a major stupid mistake, or we do things we didn't even know we were part of, and we find that we are found guilty in the eyes of the law, or in the eyes of our neighbor, or as we read scripture, maybe even in the eyes of God. And so we can have a guilty heart in this life. And so part of 
part of being in the church is to be the reminder and to be reminded through our worship that we are free and we are con to continue on with a heart of a forgiven person and not to carry those burdens around. Let Jesus and let God know and recognize the forgiveness that's available. Likewise, as we go into the world, when we face things like racism or sexism or these large scale things that are pushing society around, we cannot hide from them and pretend to be Christians and to not deal with those things. That's a new skill set that we didn't have to have maybe 10 or 15 years ago in the same way that we do now. But the idea of neighbor justice, the idea of looking at a victim of, of, of racial injustice in our community is, is, is all of us are part of it. We both are victims and we're perpetrators if we don't speak up. What a new level of responsibility and what a, what a new way of connecting through digital means and through social media. One of the human ways to deal with this, which is a, which is just a mess, and you can understand why it's a mess. And I think everybody on the political spectrum believes that this is this is partly a mess in some ways, is the way human beings in the in the in the hope to try to become righteous or the hope to try to change behavior. The one thing that we've come up with on all sides of the spectrum is a cancel culture. And cancel culture represents a human need to, you know, to stop certain behaviors through uh, through societal pressure, um, through something that some philosophers call status anxiety, where if you're not liked in a group or if the group, you know, seems like they're against you, sometimes you change your behavior. Right. Status anxiety. We know what that is in the church. We know that is in community. Um, the people who make us feel guilty for not living a certain way or whatever, that's status anxiety. But cancel culture is a reaction to things that we won't tolerate and things that we won't can't stand for in our society. But cancel culture is actually a totalitarian human response. It's a black and white you're either in or out. You're on this side of the line. You're forgivable or you're unforgivable. You're, you're, you're a friend or you're a foe, to put it bluntly, to put it sort of clearly. Forgiveness breaks the lines of can cancel culture and says, hey, let's talk in honesty about what's really going on here. Let's talk about racism and how it's affected this situation. Let's talk about abuse. Let's let's not be naive. That's part of the church too. Is having is losing our naivete about about things. Instead, we can speak with some authority and some reflection and some wisdom and saying, "Yeah, sin isn't a surprise. Human greed and and avarice and 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 lying and all of these behaviors are not a surprise. And as people who are called to forgive, we are called to also be wise and aware." So this hits us in uh, on our birthday, and it hits us at this time of, of where are we going from here and what's what's before us. And so the, the thing that I lift up from my favorite part of Pentecost is the recognition that God comes into, especially in that act story, how God comes into the room, comes into the, the, the place and fills everybody up and it's absolute chaos. It's a little bit of scary and it's a lot of scary energy, but that overwhelmingly because of the trust and faith that comes with the advocate, with the spirit of truth, with the comfort of being like, you know what, we're, we're, we're preaching the truth, we're trying our best, we're living in the truth. There is a, a joy that is undeniable that happens at Pentecost. And I, I love the picture of all these people running around in all these different languages and the joy that's coming out of them. And uh, instead of what could be a very fearful experience with everyone yelling in different, different words, uh, it becomes a beautiful thing, a beautiful harmony of voices, of languages, of inclusion, of grace. The grace of Jesus Christ has been given to the world through the gift of the church, through you and through me. And as we break bread, as we pray together, as we study together, as we grow together in faith, may we be doing that, not, also, not only for our own benefit, but also for the benefit of those in our neighborhood, 
not so that we can go make little doctrinal Christians out of them, but so that we can love them as they are and be loved by them and learn to be in relationship with them. And healing can abound and life can move forward. Blessings to you in this Pentecost. May you uh, engage this season of learning and growing and recognize that the, the gospel texts that we will be engaging this summer over throughout Mark, because we're going to go through the book of Mark this, this summer in our gospel texts, um, they're going to be great. And uh, so let's lean into this together and study and grow together so that God might make us new for the sake of the world. Blessings. This is Gracious Spirit, Heed Our Pleading, page 401. Gracious Spirit, heed our pleading, fashion a song anew. It's your leading that we're needing, help us to follow. Now let's join together uh, by sharing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And I will use the word creator instead of the word father. I believe in God, the creator almighty, who created heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Creator. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of Intercession. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things, both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages, proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people even the sighs of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, fill this congregation, our Savior's Lutheran Church, with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, be with you all, and also with you. And we share the peace together on this Pentecost Sunday, uh, and we will join together later on for our comfort groups today. So blessings to all of you on this day. And at this time, we will take a moment uh, to be prayerful and to receive our offering. Please like and subscribe and share this video. That's one of the ways we can make an offering as well as our financial tithing. And at this time, we'll hear some music and be in, in worship together.
Please join me in a word of prayer. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let's join together praying the prayer that Jesus teaches us how to pray. Our parent in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's sing together our sending song. And now a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Creator and of the Redeemer and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday to the church. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm.